What's up guys, you joined me extremely early this morning. It is 5 a.m. and we are embarking on quite the adventure. I'm three coffees deep and we're about to do 1,700 kilometers in 48 hours. The tour of Switzerland with both a Porsche Taycan and a Classic. And the idea is to prove that both the Classic and this new electric, obviously, Porsche Taycan can do the tour of Switzerland in under 48 hours. As I said, 1,700 kilometers. This is gonna be quite the adventure. That is why we're starting at 5 a.m. I'm starting in the Taycan. Let's get the show on the road. The sun's coming up and we're driving some pretty stunning mountain roads. Look at this, we're going to see a bit of everything. I mean, 1,700 kilometers, there's gonna be a bit of everything. morning fog it's 6 30 a.m right now look at this it's unbelievable with the sun which has just come up wow i'm sure we're going to see some pretty beautiful things but this is too cool not to share i'm driving the taycan right now taycan turbo driving it in the range mode the long range mode so you've got sport sport plus all that we're going to test it in all of its different modes but obviously we're also trying to get the maximum range out of the car so the long range mode is probably the mode we'll be in the most. We started with 100% charge, of course, and uh, we're gonna be driving on all sorts of roads. So it's gonna be an interesting test of how many kilometers we can get out of one charge, and then how long it takes to charge it, etc. Of course, we'll be tracking all of this. But let's see how long we get on this first, I was gonna say tank, but it's battery, isn't it? Look at that classic in front. Two liter 911 from uh, 19, 69 originally it's been modernized to be able to to be driven kind of every day um, obviously that's perfect for what we're using it for on this trip but we'll be in that car in a little bit and, and you'll discover it a bit more in the modern car on the modern side of things uh, i've been driving around i'm doing around 25.6 kilowatts per 100 kilometers right now because we're on these twisty roads best i've been able to do putting the aircon down and things like that it was around 22 for now i'll keep you posted on that we've used if i just go down here we've been driving for nearly three hours and we're at 66 percent battery so we've used 44 percent uh, so still quite a while to go but look at these roads the taycan feels so stable so poised on these roads despite the weight and despite the fact that it's electric so far really enjoyable 48% left. We've been driving for four hours and 35 minutes. You can see right there, leaving at 4.18 this morning. We've come to this Ionity charging point, which is one of the most powerful charging points, which you can access with the Taycan. But 48%, let's see, this is my first kind of try actually living with an electric, basically. So seeing how long it will take to charge, how it works. Let's do this. You scan here. All right, plugs in on the side there. Well, that was easy. That took two minutes. Now, uh, now we just wait. Charging the Taycan Turbo. Let's see how this goes. Sandwich and a coffee. We have 25 to 30 minutes to kill, right? As the car charges, but we're charging ourselves as well. Yep. Get some fuel-ish battery in us too, while the car gets some battery in it. Kind of actually perfect timing. The 25, ooh, 25 minute wait works pretty well. Erwin's getting the shots. I had my stopwatch on. It's been 37 minutes, just the time to go to the bathroom, have a sandwich, have a coffee. And we are at 98%, wow. 383 kilometer range, it says. Fantastic, that's gone really fast on these quick charges. I was worried, we, you know, you hear these horror stories of having issues 
Oh yeah, look, I'll tell you there as well. I'm having issues at the charging point, but no issues here. So uh, all good. Now we carry on. Guys, look at this. It's a dam with the lake there and then a huge drop there. It's kind of terrifying. So cool. This is the beauty of visiting a country in a car. You get to see all these special little pieces of road. Up in the mountains now in Jekstad. I don't know if you guys know know it in Switzerland. Really, really pretty. We're seeing all types of sceneries. Now we've actually managed to average 22 kilowatts per 100 kilometers, which is better than even we thought. And look, we're not driving on motorways only. We're driving on country roads basically most of the time. I've been playing around with this little screen in front of me, where I can see my G-forces, I can see the speed, and loads of other information. Uh, but we've still got 271 kilometers to go on this tank, even though we've now been driving for a total of 6 hours 48. So this battery is holding well. 22 kilowatts per 100 uh, uh, kilometers is really much better than even we thought it would be. Um, but yeah, look at this. How beautiful is this? We're about to arrive at our lunch stop now. All right, guys, we've made it. Look, we're completely lost in the middle of the uh, Swiss Alps right here. Absolutely beautiful. Look how cool this looks here. You don't see many of these being driven the way this is being driven right now. Uh, and then the Taycan, of course, as well, just chilling. Such a cool contrast between the two. But now, it's time to have some mountain food. Right, guys a lovely classic Swiss lunch in the bag that was lovely look at this look at the views in front of us it's outrageous next stop is the next charge for the Taycan which should be in 270 kilometers although right now we're at 22.2 .2 kilowatts per hundred kilometers but we're going downhill and I'm in range mode so that may go up I'll keep you posted anyways look at that in front of us deep in the in the Swiss Alps in the Swiss countryside this Taycan is so nice to drive on these long trips, though the lack of noise, I don't really miss it in this car on this type of drive because it's just so relaxing having the electric, but I think I'm gonna have a little bit of a shock when I get into the, the classic, not to say that it won't be as enjoyable. And they're just both charming in their own ways, but wow, look at that. So far, no problems doing a road trip like this in an electric. All right, we're arriving at our second charging point, but I've still got 240 kilometers range. So there's so much uh, kind of spare room of charging. And this is another, yeah, this is another quick charger. Fantastic, right. okay. 240 kilometers left. Let's see how long this one takes. But last time, it was the perfect amount of time for a coffee. So let's do that again. Well, this is what it's like when you're doing a road trip in an electric car. I fell asleep and I've woken up at another charging point. 65%, 267 kilometers to go. We thought we'd get a, a quick charge. 10 hours and 20 minutes on the road, 506 kilometers. Yes, we haven't gone very far, but they've been twisty roads. Uh, anyways, one thing we have been using is this button right here, because once you've got that on or off, so you see it pops up right there little button that goes on and off right there when you press it that will give you the e-pedal and what the e-pedal will do is when you lift off it will use the kinetic energy produced by the uh by the tires or braking to recharge the battery a little bit so it allows you to get more range and then obviously driving in range mode uh, so you've got range mode normal mode sport mode sport plus and your individual setup we've been in range mode so that's how we've been getting pretty good mileage out of it. So guys, what's kind of funky about this regen button is I'm kind of using it as a brake when I'm like driving around. You'll be driving and let's say you're doing 70 kilometers an hour, 
right? But the speed limit is 60. I'll press that button. The car will regen, brake down for me. Bosh, press it again, and off you go, and you're at your speed limit. I find it kind of fun actually driving and kind of using that as a brake. I mean, I'm sure that's not what it was designed for, but it comes in handy and means that your consumption's really low. I mean, yeah, we, we just can keep going for ages. We've still got 280 kilometers to go, and we've now been in the car for a total of 11 hours and 26 minutes. So, yeah, fair to say that I feel like I know this car pretty well right now. Um, this specific one, I haven't mentioned it too much, is in a really nice spec. You've got the Alcantara steering wheel, which feels lovely. You've got the carbon interior. There's the passenger display over there, which is switched off to save the battery a little bit more. And we're yet again going through a different kind of countryside. If we had to show you every kind of scenery that we've seen on this trip, it would literally, the video would be 11 hours long because it's, it's been changing all the time. We're on our way, way to Zurich. We have an hour, an hour and a half around there left. Um, and then we're going to be able to have an overnight stop before tomorrow. First of all, I'm going to go in the classic a little bit, but then also I think the roads are meant to be even more stunning. So I'm excited for that. But so far this Taycan for crunching miles has been amazing and it's been much smoother than I thought it would be. Um, you know, it can take a couple of minutes to connect the car and figure out the charging system. But once you've got that done, it charges up pretty quickly and I mean, you're able to hold on to your, to your charge pretty well. So, uh, no, really enjoying it, and, and the main thing that's also surprised me is the silence. I mean, I don't know if it comes across on camera, but it just completely blocks out the outside world. Um, you feel like you're in your own little cocoon. It's, it's just so relaxing. Anyways, I'll join up with you guys again in Zurich. hours 44 minutes 650 kilometers later in that Taycan we've now been joined by another different gray one really nice actually it's a 4s which is going to be joining us tomorrow we've got the classic there i'm going to be going in that tomorrow we've got Taycan 1 Taycan 2 over there it's quite the crew but what a day it's been and apparently tomorrow's going to be even prettier even more stunning in terms of uh yeah what we're going to see we're going all the way up in the mountains and we're going to go to some snow but anyways I'm going to join you in the morning. I'm pretty exhausted, so I'm going to go have a, a little... Basically, it's a nap because we're waking up really early. And, uh, yeah, see you tomorrow. 5.45 a.m., guys, in front of the hotel I left you at yesterday. We got the classic right there. Today, we have a super long day. I think earliest we finish today is at uh, 11 p.m., I think, in Geneva. Anyway, going to be intense. Should be good. Still needs to wake up a bit. and the Taycan. Today we've got about four proper mountain drives ahead of us. More than 500 kilometers. It's gonna be nuts. Anyways, I should probably do something a bit more uh, safe than this. We thought we'd give it a quick little charge now that we're out of town um, before heading up into those mountains so that we're just able to kind of relax. It's got 76%, so we'll probably do like a 10, 15 minute charge, boost it up a little bit. Uh, see what we get out of that and then at least we'll be able to go up the mountain and uh, have that peace of mind that we should be fine. All right, Taycan's charged up. I'm going to be in the classic. If it starts. Whee! Here we go. Which is it? Hello? Hello. <laughs> okay. 
in we go. Look at this, the thick steering wheel, five speed of course. It's been completely redone. It's beautiful in here. All the leather looks pretty brand new. Yeah, really nice. Let's hit the road. That noise, we're in a different, yeah, different atmosphere right now. The, the smell, the sound, you know, there's no buttons, there's no screens, the visibility around you is great. Although, there's no rear view mirror on this side. There is on that side, but not on this side. So you need to peek over your shoulder like that. But then look, you're basically just surrounded by glass. You got these super comfy, actually, seats right here. Um, yeah, it's so, so cool to be able to be back in it. It's a completely different atmosphere. Um, you probably can't crunch as many miles. Yesterday we did, yeah, basically 13 hours in the Taycan. Pretty brutal in this. You're switching drivers a lot in this car. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it brings a road trip to life, doesn't it? And the fact that this car, which is completely renovated by the Porsche uh, Classic Center in Geneva um, and can kind of hold the road 13 hours yesterday, no problems today. It's pretty incredible. In the same way as the Taycan's incredible running electric, this is the complete other side of the spectrum, but also very impressive. It's running no problems. Touch wood, he says. You never know. I would love to tell you where I am right now, but to be completely honest with you, I don't have a Scooby where I am. Uh, but I know that we're climbing, and I'm intrigued to see if this and the electric motorbike will be able to uh, yeah hold on and not suffer too much of the altitude will the old mechanics of the classic let go will the batteries of the Taycan you know use more electricity or have an effect through the altitude who knows but we're here to find out 1700 kilometers we're going kind of everywhere so we'll see which car deals with uh, each scenario the best anyway I'm having a great time here so here's the irony in this so look at this the electric car no problem, 240 kilometers left, 60% battery. But we need to fill up this guy. This little guy's got only a quarter of a tank left. So we've had to stop. The electric's chilling, it's still got loads of range left. And uh, the classic, classic needs a little bit of a reboot. So uh, yeah, I wasn't, I was expecting more to be worrying about the range on this than on that, but yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, that's crazy. Yeah, not bad at all. The uh, autonomy hasn't, it's just gone up 0 0.2. Easy peasy. Look guys, we're basically, well, it's kind of over now, but we were literally basically off-roading in the Taycan. When you go around on an entire country at some point, you're gonna end up on some pretty sketchy roads or roadworks. beautiful is this the Taycan fitting in perfectly with the snow the classic right there look at the speck of the Taycan how cool does it look right here with the white the white uh, exterior part of the rim, rims the white white brake calipers so so cool such a well thought out design because you can see that relevance to the 911 design and with the snow I just think it looks so cool and then the classic so following up from uh, what I just told you guys I literally it was three minutes down the road about which one would hold up better we then had a tiny bit of trouble starting this thing up um, it started up on the second go so no no biggie um, and uh, we just needed to give it a little bit of acceleration but we're at 2,000 meters of altitude uh, so that's normal so we've just left it running for this photo op right here um, but it's, I mean, it looks so sick doesn't it this seeing this being used properly and out in the mountains like this look at that it's pretty picturesque isn't it we were just driving and look cows just came by
Well, there you go. Welcome to Switzerland. Just cruising around. Cows. Oh, I had a little nap, guys. We're now at 33%, 146 kilometers left. Let's see if the charge works. Okay, so the battery kind of preempted itself to be ready um, for the charge. And so it heats up so that when you charge it, it goes even faster. But it means that uh, you lose five minutes driving, but you gain about 10 minutes uh, charging. So we're gonna go for a coffee now. It's charging at about 10 kilometers a minute. Yeah, a little coffee, come back out, we should be good to go. All right guys, for the next stop, we just waited for about another 15 minutes. Kind of the first time we had to actually wait for the Taycan. But I'm now gonna drive the classic two liter 1968 911. Let's do this. Really nice visibility in this. People love it, the attention you get, people really enjoy it. Now, it is quite funny not having a mirror on that side, you look over your shoulder. But I like this steering wheel, it feels very new, but nice, small, thick steering wheel. I like either the thin wooden ones or like this. Now obviously it's a lot lighter than the Taycan I've been driving recently, so you can feel that it's moving around on its feet a little bit more. Uh, you can feel everything around you. I feel like if I ran over a uh, used water bottle, I could tell you what brand it was. The, it's so communicative through the steering wheel. But yeah, the brake pedal obviously got quite a little bit of play in it. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't do much at first, but then when it gets there, and it's obviously at an angle as well. With all these cars, they've all got their own character and you need to get to know them. So I'm just gonna get to know this car a little bit and I'll report back in a, in a second. Okay, we're arriving more up in the mountains. Oh, into second. Starting to get to know the character a little bit. Now we're gonna get to know her as we're getting into these tight twisty roads. What a fun car though, it makes, I mean you don't have that much power. Just over 100, but you've got plenty to have a good time. And it's just so much fun, it's so enjoyable, the noise. Oh, you just need to have your wits about you and it makes it so much more kind of entertaining to drive. Okay, well, you can really rev it out. I'm not going too much right now because don't know the road, don't know the car, but so satisfying. You need to anticipate so much more than you would in another car. You know, hold your speed through the corner, keep your revs. You're driving in anticipation and it makes you really think about the experience. And this car has done over a thousand kilometers in under 48 hours being driven on roads like this. I mean, I find that, I don't know if you guys are as impressed as I am, but I find that really impressive for a car from the 60s to be doing this like it's nothing. Starting first time, yeah, what, what an experience. Now we're heading, surprisingly, in a car to a train, uh, which I don't know too much of what it's gonna be like, so I can't explain it to you yet, but we'll figure it out together. Guys, look at this. It doesn't get much better than this. This is why people love 911s. I get it. This is why this car's a legend. It just communicates everything with you. Look at this. Happen, happen. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Unbelievable road. Look at this, we're getting on the train. Titan is gonna be interesting behind. Is that gonna make it? I didn't think I'd be taking the train on this trip, but here we are. It's gonna be so funny when we're moving. I'm used to the Euro tunnel where you can't see anything outside. the 
train. You can hear the sound of cows. I mean, you could before we started the car. And then, oh, we've got a little singer right here. <laughs> here he is. We've got another five, four, five hours left, something like that. I don't know. We started at 6 a.m. It's all a blur. One more charge on the Taycan to do, and then we're good to go. All right, we're just last little stop. Uh, we're fueling up these bad boys, the petrol cars, while the electric car, the Taycan, actually drove further along because there's no charging point here and we were basically empty. But last stop for effectively everyone with two and a half hours to go, so we're nearly there. Although two and a half hours would usually be quite a long drive, but uh, it's, it's like the final run on this trip because we've been driving um, basically for 48 hours. later guys but look where we are we are back at the uh, Geneva Porsche Center I am pretty exhausted yet I don't know if you can tell by my face but we've got the classic which made it no problem and we've got the Taycan which made it also no problem so I was skeptic is it gonna be a problem having an electric car on this can we really do this kind of mileage can we really do Switzerland in under 48 hours with an, ele an electric car and a classic car of course it was pretty bold the two most bold cars we could choose but no problem at all with either Taycan basically just hold us up probably a total of 25 30 minutes over two days which is nothing um, and uh, the classic didn't have any issues at all so yeah fantastic massive thank you to everyone here at uh, Porsche Geneva it's been an awesome crew it's been an awesome experience but I am knackered not gonna lie so I'm gonna go have a little bit of sleep now but I hope you enjoyed it uh, subscribe if you aren't already and I'll see you again very soon cheers guys bye bye